What's going on everybody? Ryan Williams here from FanDuel here talking the week 13 DFS studs edition of the FanDuel. Hurry up. You can find me on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W and I'm going to do what I always do. Give you guys the top three plays that you should be targeting for your Sunday main slate, li main slate lineups. I know that I will be. So without further ado, let's get into the plays. We're going to start it off at the quarterback position, as we always do here on the DFS edition, DFS studs edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. And that's going to be Matthew Stafford, who comes in at 7,800. This is going to seem gross, right? He hasn't really hit 20 points for us in a while here on FanDuel. Um, really, it, this offense in general just has not looked the same um, and really, really having a tough stretch here as a go. But they're getting a home matchup against a Jacksonville Jaguars team that has looked lost on both offense and defense so I can see this as a huge get right spot for Matthew Stafford I love going um, back to the well on players when they disappoint the week prior and while Jacksonville their numbers against the pass are pretty much middle of the pack you know this doesn't on paper might not jump off the page as a favorable matchup they're much more uh, you can much more get points against this team through the run game but we got Daryl Henderson that's dealing with the, an injury here uh, doesn't look like Sean McVay is talking about he won't miss some time but we got to monitor his practice all week and if he were to somehow miss I know Sony Michelle would then become you know the favorite to kind of target in this offense but they're so pass heavy the Rams are even still you know with the struggling from behind I guess that makes sense but even in the neutral game script so when they're with a lead we've seen how much they like to pass the ball and especially in scoring position when they get into the red zone I'll talk about a piece I would love to pair Matthew Stafford with later on but when we're looking at quarterbacks that have had some success against this team we can look at Tua, Teddy B, and Joe Burrow all throwing for multiple touchdowns and 300 yards against this team. I know that Josh Allen kind of disappointed. Carson Wentz didn't get the job done. But this is a huge spot for Matthew Stafford to get right. And I'm willing to bank on him, especially pairing him with another guy again that I'll talk about. The Rams are implied for 30 and a half points on this slate. That's second to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's fire up some Matthew Stafford this week and hope he, hope he can bring home the money for us. Moving on to the running back position, I got to talk about the boy Antonio Gibson coming in at 6,200. And this is going to feel like a missed price, but again, he played on Monday Night Football. The slate's already, price has already been decided. So that brings him in as FanDuel's RB22 for the slate. If he would have played this Monday Night Football game on the Sunday slate, we're looking at him being a top 10 back considering price and then you factor in the thing or you factor in the injury to JD McKissick who was carted off in the Seattle game on a stretcher dealing with the neck injury there were reports that he was walking around uh, walking around in the locker room so we'll have to monitor his status but neck injuries are are definitely no joke so if he were to miss this would be an absolute smash spot for Antonio Gibson doesn't matter you know what what the ownership percentage is coming in at it's just he's 6200 as a lead back um, in a favorable matchup you definitely like this against the Raiders who just you know allowed Zeke and Tony Pollard to both get there they've been you know reeling against the run as of late because the offense hasn't you know looked broken but if this game stays close then we're looking at Antonio Gibson ceiling really going up there a nice 49 and a half total in this game and then look at it, looking at the stats that this guy's putting up in the past three weeks he's been on a tear you're looking at 19 plus carries in the past three games that's allowed him to put up two FanDuel uh two 20 point FanDuel games in in two of the past three games he had only had one uh, 20 plus FanDuel point game in the first eight games of the season. So McKiss or Gibson kind of coming into his own here, especially if McKissick misses, I'm going to have a ton of Antonio Gibson this week. And I think you should too. Wrapping it up, we're going to go to wide receiver. And I said that I liked a Matthew Stafford target, and that's going to be Cooper Cup who comes in at 9,000. There's no Christian McCaffrey on the slate. There's no, uh, Devonte Adams and so we really should be looking at Cooper Cup next I know that you know the running back position is going to be a huge talking point with injuries to the position you got uh, Mixon who's priced up now over 9,000 you got uh, Jonathan Taylor who's coming in at I believe over 10,000 and so you know I, I get it that playing playing those guys makes a ton of sense you want the touchdown equity and the touchdowns haven't been there for Cooper Cup the past three weeks right hasn't found the end zone hasn't found pay dirt but you're looking at 
just the share of opportunities that he's seeing in this offense. I mean, Matthew Stafford is leaning on him, you know, double digit targets in the past three games, even on this losing streak, put up in a hundred yard game as well, close to 80, 90 yards. Receptions are getting to that, to that plethora too, with the uh, 10 receptions, I believe in two of the last three. So absolutely smashing um, still. And if the touchdowns, if the touchdown regression comes for Cooper cup, you're absolutely going to love this. And I talked about with Matthew Stafford, just the red zone opportunities and Cooper cup is still leading uh, all pass catchers and red zone opportunities tied with Adam Thielen for the most red zone touchdowns, but leading in yards, receptions, targets when it comes to the red zone. And again, if Daryl Henderson were to miss this game, I think that we could even consider more touchdown equity for Cooper Cup. And also we have to think about OBJ dealing with the hip pointer injury. They're saying that he should be okay, but that's another one that we want to monitor because it could just be Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby going out there with Matthew Stafford. Again, this is a Jacksonville team who the numbers might not stand out as far as statistics go, but when you're looking at the implied point team total, even the favorable matchup with the 13 point spread, I'm still willing to go Cooper Cup here. He has the biggest upside of any wide receiver on the slate, arguably any play on the slate. And uh, let's load him into lineups this week for week 13. That's going to do it for the week 13 DFS studs edition of the FanDuel. Hurry up, guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You can hit the notification bell as well to make sure you get all of the all of our content as it goes live. You can, you know, never miss never miss a beat with JJ Start Sit Show. Um, all the hurry ups that we got, all the live shows that we're doing for Monday Night Football and the Sunday of uh, uh, countdown to kickoff show as well that I'm doing as far as getting your bets on the FanDuel Sportsbook. We won't be doing it this Sunday, but we'll be back um, for the rest of the year as well on the Sunday show. So make sure you guys are tuning in to all the content. Appreciate that. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I'll catch you guys for the week 14 DFS studs edition of the FanDuel. Hurry up until then. Get that money. Peace. (laughs) 